This video is brought to you by EcoFlow. Batteries are the key to the future of renewable energy. We all know that in order for intermittent renewables like solar and wind to be useful, we need energy storage to make them work over long periods of time. Lithium-ion batteries come to mind, but they're still too expensive for truly long-term storage. Pumped hydro storage makes up the largest battery systems in the world, but they're limited to areas with large bodies of water and vertical height differences. Over 96% of the Earth's water is contained in oceans, so what if we could turn the oceans or lakes themselves into batteries? There's some compelling technologies here. Let's see if we can come to a decision on this. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. At this point, it shouldn't be a surprise to any of you that I'm fascinated with energy storage technologies. If we're going to transition away from fossil fuels towards renewables, new energy storage techniques are essential. As I've mentioned in previous videos, a big issue with offshore wind and large-scale solar technologies is how to store their energy. And currently, the levelized cost of storage of newly installed grid-scale lithium batteries ranges from $131 to $232 per megawatt hour. In a race to drive down storage prices, some researchers and companies are trying to develop underwater storage systems that turn oceans and lakes into batteries. But how well do they actually work? Well, the first alternative is called Buoyancy Energy Storage Technology, or BEST. <laughs> That's the best acronym I've ever seen which has been developed by researchers at the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis. Imagine that you're on the beach or in the pool and you force a ball under the water. Since the ball is filled with air, which is less dense than water, it needs considerable force to keep it submerged, right? So while the ball is underwater, it's storing potential energy. And this is the basic principle behind BEST. Instead of a ball, BEST uses a platform anchored on the ocean floor that's connected to a 100 by 100 meter array of high density polyethylene pipes, each filled with compressed gas like air or hydrogen. BEST is used in conjunction with floating solar power stations or offshore wind turbines. As those systems generate electricity, it drives electric motors that pull the buoyant tubes down to the ocean floor in order to store that potential energy. When energy is needed for the grid, the tubes are released and their upward force drives the motor in reverse, operating as a generator and pushing electricity back into the grid. After simulating the system and performing an economical analysis, the researchers concluded that the system could have a great performance in storing energy from offshore wind farms that are operating close to coastlines and islands with no mountains. The downside is the cost. From off-the-shelf parts, they estimated a levelized cost of storage of around $496 per megawatt hour, which is really high compared to lithium-ion batteries. However, there are nuances to that number. The researchers affirmed that if investments were made to develop new materials and technologies for the BEST system, instead of using off-the-shelf parts that aren't optimized for this use, this could reduce its cost to around $50 per megawatt hour, storing energy in a weekly cycle. However, there are some big assumptions that lead to that tenfold cost reduction. More fine tuning is required before the cost can be accurately estimated. In addition, installation costs are also a constraint since best systems come in at $4,000 to $8,000 per kilowatt, while a wind turbine costs $1,600 per kilowatt, and lithium-ion batteries come in at $1,200 per kilowatt for a four-hour battery system. While BEST still has some refining to do, the Netherlands-based company Flask, which is a spin-off of the University of Malta, they've been developing an interesting hydro-pneumatic energy storage system. Now, FLASC stands for Floating Liquid Piston Accumulator Using Seawater Under Compression. <laughs> it's one heck of an acronym. It stores energy using a hydropneumatic liquid piston driven by a bidirectional pump, which can also work as a turbine. It can be installed directly into a floating solar platform or a floating wind turbine. Now, in this system, clean electricity is used to pump ocean water into a closed chamber, compressing a metered mass of air. When energy demand spikes, the system allows compressed air to push water back through a hydraulic turbine generator, recovering that stored energy. And the system can be installed in three different ways. Within a floating platform with an external subsea hydropneumatic module, entirely on the floating platform, or as a subsea installation. Now, the first installation method was tested as part of an experiment between 2017 and 2019. The second type will be deployed in 2022 as a pilot system for a large-scale multi-purpose floating platform. And the complete subsea installation is currently being tested with a leading subsea engineering service company targeting oil and gas applications and fixed foundation offshore wind. The company is also exploring the use of flask for liquefaction of natural gas, reverse osmosis desalination, and offshore green hydrogen production. There's a lot of potential uses here. Now, some pros of the system are that it uses the ocean as a heat sink and achieves thermodynamic efficiencies above 95% and can perform well even in shallow water from 20 to 30 meters. On top of that, the savings cost can range between 20 and 50%, and each system is expected to last for over 20 years. So how does that life expectancy compare to something like a lithium-ion battery storage facility? 
Well, an analysis using cumulative damage modeling tools developed by the company showed that using lithium-ion batteries to suppress wind turbine intermittency would need to be replaced about four times over a 25-year project. Using typical offshore maintenance, an analogous flask system could last the entire duration of the project. From the economics perspective, a flask system would save around 500,000 euros per megawatt hour, which is about $554,000, throughout the entire lifespan. That's ruling out the logistical costs of replacing the battery systems, as well as any downtime that may result. However, the technology is still in the early development stage, with the company only working on a one-tenth scale demonstration prototype. And while promising, there's still a long way to go until we see these systems storing energy on a large scale. And this is where we get to some of the tech that's a step or two closer to becoming reality. But before getting to that future energy storage tech, I've got to talk about some other battery tech that you can get for yourself today, and that's today's sponsor, EcoFlow. Now, I've talked about my EcoFlow Delta Max and Pro batteries before, but one of my favorite things about EcoFlow is the incredible number of accessories available to fit pretty much any need. For instance, I have a couple of their 220 watt bifacial solar panels here. My Delta Pro can handle up to six of these for complete off-grid charging. They're designed with portability in mind and a case that can double as a kickstand for early morning or late afternoon sun angles. It's a great solution for camping or an RV. And speaking of RVs, they have a wall-mountable wireless remote control that can pair with your Delta Pro, which makes it super easy to manage and track your battery storage from inside the RV. And if you're on the go and want to charge up super fast, you can use the EV Xtreme adapter with any level two EV charging station. There's so many different ways to put the EcoFlow Delta Pro to work from home or on the go. It's an incredibly flexible power station. Check out the link in the description below to order the EcoFlow Delta Pro, solar panels, or other accessories today. Thanks to EcoFlow and to all of you for supporting the channel. So let's get back to those technologies that are a step closer to reality. So what about underwater pump storage hydropower? The idea behind this system is pretty similar to pump storage hydropower installed onshore. You pump water to a reservoir located at a higher altitude when energy supply is higher than demand, and then release the water to drive turbines located downstream when demand is high. In underwater pump storage, the power plant is already on the water, and an enclosed vessel containing water is installed on the seafloor. When there's excess energy, electricity is used to pump water up from the vessel, leaving the inside at a near vacuum. Then when the stored energy is needed, the water is released back into the vessel using the pressure generated by the seawater, flowing through a hydraulic turbine and producing clean electricity. There are many benefits to this system. The existing landscape isn't affected, water quality doesn't degrade, there's no constraint regarding water level and temperature, and the system takes advantage of natural water pressure to produce energy. For each 10 meters of depth, pressure increases by about one atmosphere, or about one bar. And with vessels at near vacuum, when the system is 100% energy stored, there's a big energy potential to be harnessed. Some designs are intended to operate at pressures above 75 bar with efficiencies around 70 to 80%, which is very close to traditional pumped storage hydropower. And these underwater storage systems can easily be scaled up by adding more vessels and electric cables to carry the electricity. In addition, compared to conventional pumped hydro storage, underwater systems don't require land and mountains or valleys to build reservoirs. They also don't lose water due to evaporation in the same way that reservoirs do. The first project that put this concept to practice was the Stored Energy at Sea Project, or STENC for short. It started with Dr. Schmidt Boking and Dr. Gerhard Luther, who patented the idea in 2011. At the end of that year, the Fraunhofer Institute for Energy Economics and Energy System Technology partnered with Hochtief Solutions and developed a pilot project. It consisted of building an underwater pump storage system that used the sea itself as an upper storage reservoir and 30 meter diameter hollow spheres on the seabed at a depth of 700 meters to act as the lower stage reservoir. At the beginning of 2012, they presented a business plan where the target cost per installed kilowatt were 1,238 euros or about $1,366, in comparison, the cost for common pumped hydropower stations at that time was between 1,300 to 1,600 euros per kilowatt, which is about 1,400 to $1,700 per kilowatt. In 2013, the Stensi project was funded and feasibility studies started to be developed in collaboration with the University of Stuttgart. Three years later, a one-tenth scale model mock-up with a three meter diameter was built and tested in a lake near Überlingen, Germany. After the test, the team discovered that their design was feasible at around 700 meters, where the pressure would be about 70 bar by using materials that could handle the pressure. A single sphere could store about 20 megawatt hours of electricity, which is about five megawatts for four hours. In addition, a study developed by the team showed that an underwater energy storage system with 80 spheres could output up to 400 megawatts and would cost between four cents and 20 cents per kilowatt hour. That's the equivalent to 44 to $220 per megawatt hour. That's a cost competitive option. Now, researchers from MIT also worked on a very similar project using hollow 30 meter diameter concrete spheres, which had three meter thick walls and weighed thousands of tons. That can make them an option for anchoring floating wind turbines. 
With a sphere sitting at a 400 meter depth, it could store up to 6 megawatt hours of electricity, but a single sphere was expected to cost $12 million. The end result? The cost for storing energy in the sphere would be about 6 cents per kilowatt hour, which is the equivalent to about $60 per megawatt hour. That makes it another cost competitive option. The Dutch startup Ocean Grazer is also developing a utility scale offshore energy storage system, which won the Best of Innovation Award at CES 2022 this year. The Ocean Battery provides eco friendly utility scale energy storage up to gigawatt hour scale. It pairs flexible bladders with a buried concrete vessel, and rather than pumping water from the vessel into the ocean, water is pumped into sealed flexible bladders. When there's demand for power, water is pumped from the bladders into the low pressure reservoir, driving multiple turbines to produce electricity. Ocean Grazer CEO said, Minimal discharging time is 0.5 hours, sufficient for the highest demands in the utility sector. Any lower power capacity to storage capacity can be created to support bulk shifting, for example. There's no self-discharging whatsoever, so power can be stored as long as you want. One benefit of the ocean battery compared to the technology developed for the Stensi project is that it operates as a sealed system. The battery has low maintenance costs, and the materials used to build the ocean battery are steel, concrete, rubber, PVC, which are all available worldwide. The company said that the single reservoir, which has a 20 million liter capacity, could store up to 10 megawatt hours of energy, and the system could be easily scaled up. The system's efficiency is expected to be between 70 and 80 percent. In addition, the system is likely to run for an unlimited number of cycles and have a minimal lifetime of 20 years, although developers said that it could probably go for 30 to 50 years. On the flip side, lithium-ion batteries can provide 2 to 3,000 cycles, depending on the manufacturer and the environmental conditions where the battery is being used. Where the minimum lifetime of Ocean Gracer's tech would last 20 years, most lithium batteries would have a minimum lifetime of only 5 years. Now, Ocean Gracer is building its first commercial prototype in the north of the Netherlands in an inshore lake. The system will store energy from a floating solar power plant and is expected to be finished in 2023. A project involving a wind farm is also in the pipeline. Their CEO said a floating solar installation might potentially be included in that project, but details have to be worked out as we are in the scoping phase. The project is scheduled to be completed in 2025. Underwater pump storage hydropower looks like a great alternative to lithium-ion batteries and conventional pump storage hydropower. For comparison, the wholesale levelized cost of storage of lithium batteries is between $131 and $232 per megawatt hour, and the LCOS for pumped hydropower is $175 per megawatt hour, while the MIT study showed an expected LCOS of $60 per megawatt hour for the underwater pump storage hydropower. This innovative technology preserves water resources, doesn't damage the landscape to build reservoirs, and stores significant amounts of electricity from offshore renewables at a practical cost. However, to become economically viable, the spheres need to be placed at least 200 meters deep with an optimal depth of 750 meters. Currently, most offshore wind turbines are fixed mounted, being installed up to 50 meters deep, so there's still some open questions about implementation. Turning the ocean into a battery looks like an amazing idea to make offshore renewables even better. Although the studies made by the companies and researchers have shown that some methods of storing electricity underwater looks pretty competitive to lithium-ion batteries, most of those technologies are still on the drawing board or just now getting to pilot projects. Even though there's some pilot-scale data, there's still steps required before deploying large-scale installations. Still undecided on this? Do you think that we'll see some of these energy storage systems someday soon? Jump in the comments and let me know. If you like this, be sure to check out one of these videos, and a big welcome to new supporter plus patron Doug Savage and producer Alan Jude. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.